welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Tuesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. And if you have been listening for very long at all, you know we give the same title to each and every one of our Tuesday broadcasts. We call them our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. Tract and Truth. The word tract is a reference to a gospel tract. The word tract there is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's an evangelism tool. It tells the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation that's found in the scriptures, the word of the living God. A gospel tool that's in written form, a short written format, easy to carry so that you and I can have these gospel tools at our disposal wherever we go. And the main thrust of ministry here is the publication of gospel tracts. And I would love to give you a sample packet of our gospel tracts. I've got one in my hand. I'm going to talk about here in just a moment. Right now, my Bible is sitting open to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. We have been doing a study, and we will return to that study tomorrow in the book of 2 Peter, but it's Tracked in Truth Tuesday. We're going to talk about the Gospel. Last week on our Tuesday broadcast, we talked about the fact that God is an evangelist. And if you didn't hear that broadcast, I wish you'd go back and go to our website, our web address, by the way, is BibleTracksInc.org. BibleTracksInc.org. You can listen to past broadcasts there free of charge. Love for you to do that. But last week we talked about the fact that God is an evangelist. He's a gospel teller. He goes ahead of us. And I have actually told a story that was just had happened that day. Well, I want to continue that theme. I want to talk about the barricades of God, the barricades that God puts up so it prevents sinners from going to hell. God loves sinners. God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Well, get with me. Get something you can jot some notes down. I've got five statements I want you to write down today. Would you be ready with that? Now, I've got one of those gospel tracts in my hand right now. This one's entitled, Where Are the Dead? It's a gospel tract that explains the gospel, but we usually give a beautiful face on the track and a catching title, hoping that somebody will pick it up and begin to read. Again, the title of this one is, Where Are the Dead? The track opens this way. That depends on how they died. You can die in the Lord or in your sins. And then the fact that people are sinners is explained. It says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. The track goes on to say that you were born with a sinful nature. And you are not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. And it really clarifies the fact that people are sinners and thereby they are in their sins. But the tract goes on and says this, God sees you in your sins as being unfit for heaven, and there shall in no wise enter into it, into heaven, anything that defileth. And the tract says to die in your sins means you die without forgiveness, without cleansing, without hope. You die under the judgment and penalty of death. But then it talks about receiving Christ and it says this, if you receive Christ, God no longer looks upon you in your sins. He sees you as his dear son, all dressed up in the, the Lord Jesus Christ, all the wonderful perfection, the perfect holiness and the spotless righteousness of Christ, our yours. Here's a great, great tool. Where are the dead? Well, are you going to die, friend, in your sins or in Christ? You need this gospel tool. Be ready when at the end of the program, my announcer gives 
our contact information to give our mailing address we'll give our telephone number he'll talk about our website but friend please let me send you free of charge that sample packet containing one each of all of our english gospel tracks including this one where are the dead again our website is bibletracksinc.org I have not talked about this in a long, long, long time, but we try to make our ministry useful, not only for evangelism, but also to bolster and grow the people of God. There is a ministry that we call a men's institute, a men's institute. It's something that I go to a local church and teach. This is something that came out of our 30 years of pastoral ministry where we discipled men one-on-one, handled all the cruddy problems that men deal with, and we're trying to help local churches have strong men. In the men's institute, we can cover topics like this. How can I have consistent moral victory in my thought life? How can I develop a dull temptation life? How can I have assurance of my salvation? How can I make my wife a radiant person? And the list goes on. Oh, friend, we would love to bolster the men of your local church. If that's something that's encouraging you, why don't you contact us here and we'll talk about setting up a date for that. Well, as I said, my Bible is open here to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said this, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Now, friend, have you ever seen a barricades? You go to any large city, look near any key government building, and you're going to find barricades because the threat of terrorism and mass destruction has been moving law enforcement agencies to find ways to try and prevent the killing and destruction of people and property. You want, they want, the, the protect lives and protect property. Friend, we want to talk about barricades that God, who loves lost people and does not want lost people to go to hell, God has put up barricades. I'm going to mention five of them here. Five barricades of God to get in the way of sinners going to hell. Jesus is warning here in Matthew 7 of the fact of eternal destruction of men's souls because all have sinned. Our sins have earned us the right, the entry into eternal destruction in hell because the wages of sin is death. We would consider human leaders to be negligent if they fail to erect obstacles to prevent potential destruction by terrorists. Well, God knows of the actual coming destruction and eternal death in hell that sinners will face, so God has erected barricades to keep people out of hell. Are you ready? Number one, write it down. He has given the barricade of the Bible, the barricade of the Bible. God gave us his word to be a lamp and a light for our lives. We're told this in 1 John chapter 5, these things, referring to the Bible, have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have eternal life. Another verse says, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. That's John 20, verse 31. Beloved, God gave us the barricade of his word that we might live and not die in our sins. He's anchored his word in the rock of his protection to ensure that it will not be lost. Barricade number two, write it down. The barricade of creation. While the debate between evolutionists and creations will go on unending, the creation is a loud and clear barricade of God. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork in Psalm 19. There's a clear statement in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. It says this, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his, God's eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. God has given creation as a barricade. Barricade number three that God has put up is the barricade of the church, the universal church and the local church. Jesus said that he would build his church. Why? Well, he has designed his church to be, and I'm reading now from 1 Timothy chapter 3, the church is to be the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Jesus commissioned the church to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature or person, Mark 16 says. God gave his church to be a barricade to death and destruction that's facing sinners. 
The fourth barricade that God has put in the way of sinners is the barricade of their conscience. This conscience God has put within us. God's word says that people show that they are aware of God's moral laws. They inwardly know right from wrong and show it in various ways. Here's what God says in Romans chapter 2. He says that the law is written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. God does not want sinners to go into eternal death, so he gave us a conscience as a barricade to destruction, and it makes us feel guilty for our sin. That's a gift from God. The fifth and final barricade I want to mention is this. God gave us the barricade of his only begotten son. Listen to the Bible verses here. From John chapter 1, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Here's another one from Hebrews chapter 1. God hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Jesus himself said about himself, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved in John chapter 3. And then the most famous Bible verse of all, say it with me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here's another verse, Romans 5, verse 8. But God commended, that means exhibited, his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even after watching Jesus' life and seeing his miracles, and many of the people during Jesus' earthly ministry refused to believe on him and to escape the destruction of hell. Why? Jesus told these people this, ye will not come to me that you might have life. Now, God has placed barricades in our world so that sinners would not go to the place of destruction called hell. You and I are part of his barricade system. Reading about God's barricades does not mean we are one. Thinking about being a barricade does not make us one. Listening to a radio program about God's barricade doesn't make us a barricade. Recently, I was with a family that has young children. At two places in their home, they had placed barricades. The mom and dad have taken their parenting roles seriously. They place the barricades in their home not to prevent them from being accused of child neglect. They put the barricades there because they love their children. Oh, God loves sinners, so he erected barricades. Let's let his love activate us to be barricades. We are to act in Christ's stead, 2 Corinthians 5 says. So let's act as barricades. Let's stand in the path of people, willfully hell-bent people with the gospel of grace, love, and mercy, and stand in Christ's stead. Let's let no sinner go to hell without at least a track in their hand so that they might be without excuse They've had the clear gospel given to them. God is an evangelist. God puts barricades in the way for sinners not to go to hell. You and I are part of his barricades. Let's be just that. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 828 6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.